What's up, everybody? Welcome to Youth Online. My name is Logan. I'm on staff here at Crossroads. Man, we're so excited that you guys joined us. Whether you're normally with us at our West Campus or at our Newburgh Campus, we just want to say welcome. We're glad that you're here. Um, if it's your first time watching this with us tonight, uh, we want to get to know you and connect with you. Go ahead and text FIRST to 812-432-1819. One of our leaders will actually reach out to you. Um, again, we want to welcome you to youth. Another way to get plugged in here at youth is through our small groups. Um, it's really cool to see how even during these crazy times, um, we're still able to get together um, and we're actually growing. That's the cool thing. Like we have new people who are joining um, every week. So if you're interested in getting plugged into a small group, text groups to the same number, 812-432-1819. Well, we got a lot going on here at youth and uh, we want to, to take a look at our TV guide. Um, we got some interesting stuff coming up. As you can see, tomorrow night, we actually have um, another Zoom hang at 8 p.m. We did this last week and, and, and this was probably the best thing that we've done since the quarantine. I mean, it's just a free for all. Everybody come on uh, to, to Zoom and we all literally just hang out. I think we played a couple games. We had a couple contests. Um, we played a game called Preach That, where we give you a random subject or an object and you have to come up with a sermon on the spot. Um, and it was pretty cool to see some of our students come up with some, some cool things. So uh, that was awesome. Um, as you can see, we got Smack Talk coming back uh, Friday night at 8 p.m. with Mac and Sarah. That's always a great time. And then, of course, we have Church Online Sunday morning. Um, that's at 1045. Now, look, I know that you guys are night owls but it's time to start waking up and joining us for church online seriously the the service is always great the worship is always great but not only that um, it's just us learning together as the church um, i think it's really important for us all to be together um, i want to challenge you wake yourself up it's going to be awesome join us this weekend for church online well we got a great service ahead of us uh, but before we go into our message, uh, I want to know in the live chat, who is your favorite youth leader and why? Specifically, what have they done to change your life? Let us know in the live chat. This pandemic has obviously caused many of us to have to stay at home with our family and relatives. And being at home and spending time with relatives is awesome. Playing games, watching movies, hanging out, it's great until it's not anymore. I don't know about you, but I have a few relatives that I don't necessarily love being at their house. It's not that I don't love them, it just is that I don't really love the environment in which they live in. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the sights, the smells, that toilet that seems like it hasn't been cleaned in years. There's just some people's houses that I love, but I don't love going to their place. Yet because they're my relative, it doesn't matter, at least once a year, maybe around Christmas time, I always find myself going back to their house. I'll tell you, I've got a secret. When I go over to someone's house that I don't really want to be at, I use this phrase as soon as we walk through the door. Hi, we're just stopping by. 
And the moment that there's a little bit of a lull in conversation, the moment that I see the opportunity, I make sure that I put in there, hey, we, uh, we need to get going. And as politely and as respectfully as possible, I make my exit because all I want to do is get back to my home. Because when I walk through the door of my home, the sights, the smells, my own toilet, all of it, I don't know what it is, man. It just makes me feel so much better to be at my home, to be at my place where I can find rest, where I can be myself, where I can just be at home. Maybe you know exactly what this feels like. Maybe your room is like this. It doesn't matter if your room is nice. It doesn't matter if your house is really big. It doesn't matter even if your room is all that fancy. It's your room. It's your house. It's your home. It's where you feel comfortable. It's reassuring. It's where you find peace. And I think it begs the question that if our physical selves want so badly to feel at home, how much more so do our souls need to feel at home? There's a story in the Bible about these two women named Mary and Martha. And this is a big day for Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10 because Jesus is coming over to their house. And what ends up happening in the story is that when Jesus comes over, Martha is very concerned about the look, the sights, the smells of her house. She spends all of her time trying to cook and clean and make this perfect meal, this perfect day for Jesus that she misses out on spending time with Jesus. While Martha is in the kitchen working tirelessly, her sister Mary is just in the living room spending time with Jesus. The story finally hits sort of a boiling point where Martha has realized she's had enough. She calls to Jesus from the other room and says, Jesus, could you tell my sister to help me out? I'm here working. I'm here slaving away, trying to make this a great experience for you. And she's not helping me out at all. Jesus says something to Martha that I believe he wants to speak to you and I today. He says, Martha, you're worried about many things, but Mary has chosen what is better. Mary has focused not on making sure that her home is perfect. She just wants to be with me. I think Mary and Martha, they represent two different ideas that sometimes we have about God. You see, Martha was so concerned about the facade, about putting on a good front, about putting on a good face because she knew Jesus was coming over. But Mary just wanted to be with Jesus. See, Martha had the idea, Jesus is coming to my home. But Mary had the idea, I'm at home when I'm with Jesus. You know, I think many of us, we're so focused on the external that we're neglecting the internal. And this fascination and focus and and, and fixation on our facades is causing us to neglect what's most important, what's better. It's causing us to neglect our souls. I think some of us, we don't know even if we're at peace. If I was to ask you today, how is your soul? How are you doing on the inside? When's the last time your soul felt at home, you'd say, I don't know. Many of us, we don't even know if we're healthy. We don't even know if we're doing well. You know, some of us, we've spent so much time in these homes called doubt, insecurity, frustration, isolation, anxiety, that instead of just stopping by, we've made ourselves at home. I came to you today to let you know that your soul is at home when your soul is with Jesus. At this time in our service, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. And while you're here in the live chat, I want you to keep that chat going as you answer some discussion questions that we have 
for you. I think that there are questions that are going to clarify some things in your life. We're going to ask you to be vulnerable during this time, to open up and answer these questions honestly. Question number one, why do you think we often neglect the state of our souls? Is this an issue for you? Question number two, what does the phrase, the soul is home when it returns to God mean to you? Question number three, when was the last time you felt that your soul was truly home and you felt peace on the inside? Well, if you're still uh, chatting with us, uh, we just invite you guys to maybe step away from the chat for a moment, and uh, we're gonna worship together uh, with one voice, no matter where you are, and we invite you to lift these words up together. Sing these words out. People come together, strange as neighbors, our blood is one. Children of generations, of every nation, of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. 
Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Oh. Jesus, our redemption. Jesus, our redemption and our salvation is in his blood. Jesus, the light of heaven and fret forever his kingdom come. Come on. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up, I don't fear no evil. But fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Whoa. separated even though we're in different homes all around our city uh, we can lift one voice in unison even though we can't hear each other singing we can join together with a song that even the angels are singing all around us even right now in this moment and so we're singing in an, an eternal song that as our praise goes up that the walls that are even within our own hearts the walls that are around our city can fall down come on sing it out swing wide are you heavens let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All these children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Oh, swing wide, oh, you heaven. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All these children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Come on, swing wide one more time. Swing wide, all you heavens. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All these children, clean as pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. So Children, clean and pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Jesus, our redemption and our salvation is in His blood. 
Jesus, the light of heaven, my friend forever, his kingdom come. Um, it's been really easy for me during this time to focus on um, just everything that's going on around me, whether that be um, school or work or relationships, maintaining all that stuff. But um, it's just taken time for me also to process that the only thing that really matters is being still with the Lord, um, just being able to rest in His presence. Beneath the surface of my anxious imagination Beckons a calmness that is found in you alone And washes over every doubt, every imperfection Jesus, your presence is the comfort of my soul Sing this with me. There's nowhere I'd rather be when you're singing over me. I just wanna be with you. I'm lost in your mystery. I'm found in your wanna be with you Cause here in the waiting I won't worry about tomorrow No need to focus on the things I can't control All my attention on the wonder of this moment Jesus, your presence is the comfort of my soul There's nowhere I'd rather be When you're singing over me I just wanna be with you I'm lost in your mystery And I'm found in your love for me I just wanna be
Today, if you find yourself wanting and desiring something that this life cannot give you, that may be your soul telling you, you need to come home. That may be God himself actually calling you, tugging at your heart, letting you know that this world will not be able to satisfy that feeling, that desire to be home. That in fact, you're at home when you're with Jesus. I don't know where you are today. Maybe you're feeling like you're far from God. I want you to know the journey home is not a difficult one. The Bible talks about repenting. That sounds like a churchy word, but all it really means is to say, I'm sorry and change your direction. To say, I'm sorry and turn around and come home. Maybe it's just been a really long time. You've, you've been following God for a long time, but it feels like it's been a long time since your soul felt at peace, that your soul felt like it was at home. Who do you need to talk to today? Who do you need to share your anxieties with? The Bible actually says that we can actually cast our cares upon each other. We can talk it out with each other and grow together. There are leaders in this chat. There are people on our staff that want to talk with you, that want to pray with you. We would encourage you, reach out today. Talk with someone who can show you the way back home. As we close out our service today, I just have one kind of final thing to talk to you about, and it's something new that we're going to be doing. It's a challenge that I want to give to you this week. Here is our weekly challenge to every person watching this service right now. Once or twice this week, set aside 15 minutes just to be with Jesus like Mary did. Find a quiet place with no distractions. Maybe play worship music to help you focus. Then spend time just thinking about who God is and what He's done for you and how much He loves you. Come to your group this week prepared to share how you felt afterward. I really hope and pray that you would take that weekly challenge serious this week. What does it really look like to spend some time with Jesus? What does it look like for your soul to return home? Would you pray with me? Father, I pray for every single person that can hear this video, that can hear my voice right now. Father, that you would remind us that you are always at our home. You're always at the door knocking. And all we have to do is let you in. Lord, if we've been feeling anxious, if we feel that our soul has not been at peace, if it's been such a long time since we've felt like we were home, I pray today that our soul would find peace as we accept your grace, as we accept your forgiveness, as we spend time with you this week. Lord, would you remind us that we're at home when we're with you. In your name we pray. Amen.